Hey guys, this is Truth Cush Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about will you do the right thing when nobody's watching? And so we're gonna spend a few moments today talking about a big purchase that we made recently. We bought over 280 old Annex soapbox holders, and we are going to just be talking about a lesson that has been on our heart recently because we all make mistakes, and sometimes you need to not only look out for yourself, but you also have to look out for others. And so one of my favorite stories when I was a kid was that our dad, when he drove anywhere, he would look for people's wallets and phones on the side of the road because people would always walk out to their car, put their wallet or their phone on top of their car and drive off, right? And every time or almost every time that he would drop the wallet or phone off, they would ask, why do you do this, man? Why don't you just keep the money in the wallet, throw the wallet in the trash and live life? And he said, because one day... I'm gonna lose my wallet and I want someone to do the right thing. And so how does this relate to the soapbox deal that we're talking about today? It relates to it because we ended up giving someone an extra thousand dollars recently in a deal. We uh, just did the math wrong. And when we double checked the math when we got home, we realized that we gave them an extra thousand dollars. And we called them and they said, oh man, I got, you know, gotta give you that thousand dollars back. I really wanted that thousand dollars and I'm like, but man, it's, it's the right thing to do. And so he ended up giving us the money back and that's great. You know, I'm glad he did the right thing and we moved on. In this deal, uh, we met with Carl. Carl uh, is in a shop in Tyler, Texas and he has been holding on to these soapboxes for a while. And he said, hey, come on down. I got this all in an Excel spreadsheet and we can make a deal. And so we went there, took a look at all the Annex soapboxes in the shop and we came to a deal. So we got home. And we do the same thing as the other deal. We would put everything in the system. So if you guys are taking a look at a coin, like this 1888 Morgan dollar, what we would do is we would put 1888, $1. We'd put uh, who it's graded by and the grade. And then we also would put the cert number in. And then we would put what we paid for it. And this allows you by the end of the month to know exactly what you paid for everything, what you sold everything for, who you sold it to, what state you sold it to for tax reasons. And the list goes on. But when we got home, we realized that we were actually short of paying Carl $600. And so in that moment, when you, the person that has all the power, the other guy doesn't even know, you have the ability to do the right thing when no one's watching. That is what is important because one day you're going to make a mistake. One day you're going to need someone to have your back, even though they might feel like it's not in their best interest to look out for you. And so that's just a small tidbit lesson that we've been thinking about recently. So when you buy 280 coins at once, something that you should focus on is how to split them up so that you can reach as many people as possible and not oversaturate or the same market actually. So uh, I guess for somebody with their business cap on and they're thinking about trying to sell 280 slabs, what we try to focus on is picking out the absolute best and offering it to our customers who enjoy our videos, watch our videos, and want to support us. And when you're, you know, looking at coins that are a little bit more common, like Morgan dollars or very inexpensive type coins or world coins, uh, most of the time we would post those on our eBay. And so uh, it's just a little bit of a thing that you guys should think about when you're starting to scale and how to not only receive the coins, but how do you get them rolling, moving to your customers, but also get those funds back. And so what we're trying to be extremely efficient at with every deal is how much we pay for something, but also how do we get it to you guys for the best price, but also how do we turn that capital as quick as possible. So we're going to actually spend just a second here and we're going to show you guys a few cool uh, coins that we picked out for the website. The rest of them you can view on our eBay. We're going to have that link down below for you as well. But so there's some cool coins that are in these soapbox holders, an 1888O. Hot Lips in VF35, pretty original coin. Uh, we also have this 32 Washington Quarter, has some rim toning to it. A few just early date Buffalo Nickels, a few early type coins, 1883 Shield Nickel and AU50. We have a Shield Nickel with Rays. Well, let me pull back here. Uh, we have a few kind of Washington Quarters, like I said, this is mostly common stuff. You can actually find this one on our eBay. But some neat little things, low ball coins, 
some early half cents, um, some original barber halves, some original cap bust halves that we actually ended up putting on there as well. And so let me take a few moments and flip this camera around and show you guys some more cool coins that we really like. All right, guys, the first coin I want to show you is this 1806 straight bust half, graded fine 15. So I think there's the pointed six and the rounded six. You could just tell that the 1806 here is pointed and you can actually review the back of the slab and most of the time you're going to look for that little uh, stem. Is it stemmed or does it have no stem? This one does have a stem so a few different varieties for this coin. Definitely nice original. Nice little soapbox. Then we have a 14D graded VF30. We did buy two in this deal. This one is nicer, more original, more wholesome, and has a higher grade. A nice little key date, especially uh, a cool offering in a soapbox. Then we have this 1899 Barber Dime. Light little haze to it, but mostly white. Great luster of the coin. Just a fancy little type coin for a little holder. Then we have one of my favorites, this 1883 Hawaiian Quarter. Has some great luster especially for an AE you can still see that cartwheel little color above the head and you can also see that luster coming through on the reverse we we're actually able to buy a few of these in our last soapbox deal and it's good to see one more then we have this 1863 Civil War date Indian head scent great color Min State 62 might be a Min State 63 by today's standards but honestly it's okay the way it is for us and uh, I don't know, I like the look of this coin also, how they should come. Then we have this 1866 three cent nickel. Overall, no distracting spots, just a little wear on the coin. Not too dark, not too light. Then we have this coin we discussed a little bit earlier, 1888 Ho Hot Lips, graded VF35. Hot Lips, you can just take a look right there. Another dye variety that's pretty collectible. Just the doubling of the lips. People love these a lot. And uh, they're not too expensive in mid-grade, but they do become pretty expensive in high-grade. Then we have this 1828 Classic Head Half Cent. It is uh, the Cohen 1. I think it's a little bit more money for the Cohen 1, maybe a 10% increase in price. And, uh, you know, it's pretty neat. Nothing crazy, but just some early type for you guys. Then we have a little coin for a little holder. This 1831 cap bust half dime. You can still see that remaining luster, especially being picked up in the fields. That's how most XFs should look. And this coin definitely represents that grade and it deserves all the money for it. Then we have this 1912D barber half. Another favorite of mine, just how original and how beautiful it is. If this coin was in a PCGS holder, I would send it to CAC in a heartbeat. And these do demand high values, especially with that bean. But I think it's cool to leave it as it is and let you guys have it. Then we have this 1836 cap bus quarter in fine 12. Once again, not too crazy in terms of price points, but just neat coins that people don't see too often for an affordable price that are in a holder. Most people that send coins in right now are sending them in if they're, you know, XF or AU or MS, but just buying coins like this, kind of at the lower part of the market, does keep a lot of collectors interested. Here's a tougher coin. This is 1922 No D. It doesn't denote if it is um, a weak reverse or a strong reverse, but the way you guys can tell is if you look at the wheats on, uh, on the reverse, once again, going back to dye varieties, this coin has really strong wheats on the right and the left side of the coin. And you can also see this in CoinFax as well, just to see it for yourself and know what you're buying. Then we have this 1814 Classic Head Large Scent. Exceptionally tough uh, coin to run into in any grade. Has a little bit of a chip here at the top of the holder, which is unfortunate, but once again, just pretty neat, pretty cool. Then we have some classic type coins that people love a lot uh, with the Standing Liberty Quarter. One of the most collectible and desirable series. More common date, but just a little gentle wear on the coin. Once, a once again, great devices. 
Uh, excuse me, pardon my French. Then we have this 31S Lincoln Cent, another key date that's pretty affordable. This is a uh, Mid-State 63 Brown, has the little reds in the background, but I would call this one Brown also. Then we have a pretty tough Cedar to Quarter from 1849. Not many in the pop report. This one's an XF. I do agree with the grade. And uh, I do think it's just nice, rich, wholesome. And if someone is developing a seated quarter set, this one should be a good match for them. And then we have a pretty interesting 1907 Indian head scent. It's great mid state 60 red brown. It's got some beautiful toning on both sides of the coin. Definitely demands a premium. And it's, uh, I don't know, pretty nice. And so we hope you guys enjoyed all these soap boxes. Hope you guys go check them out. All right, guys. So I have this 1800 Drape Bust Halftime that I want to talk to you guys about today. And this is just to give you guys a little bit of insight on how we look up varieties. When you're sitting down at a dealer's table, if it's not memorized in your head, sometimes it's easier if you're able to look at um, some varieties and get to them pretty quickly. You know, you can't carry around a variety book everywhere you go. It'll kind of reveal your hand, and sometimes you get lucky, run into varieties that are a little bit more expensive. And so if you guys go to the PCGS CoinFAQs app um, on your phone, and we're going to use this 1800 Drape Bust Half Dime, for example. I'm going to type in 1800 Half Dime, and it's going to pop up with the 1800 Half Dime. You're going to tap on that, and when you tap on it, it's going to say PCGS val uh, Value View. It's going to say More Images, and then you can actually scroll down. It'll see some offerings and then it'll say varieties. And so when you tap on varieties, there'll be three varieties that are mentioned. A major variety is the Live, live Kitty. Is it live Kitty? Yeah, I'm going to say Live Kitty Liberty. or whatever. Uh, it's, not, it's not an R. So when I was taking a look at this 1800 Drape Bust Half Dime uh, at the table, I thought, man, it was a cool coin. It was an affordable price. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to offer it to our customers. But then you actually take photos of the coin. So this is the second time now that you get to view the coin. And when we were taking photos of it, I took an up close photo of it and I realized that the R wasn't fully struck. And so a major variety is the Live Key or Live Kitty, whatever variety. And it actually mentioned it in CoinFAX. And so I'm going to tap on that. And when I tap on it, it's going to load hopefully. And I'm going to scroll over one time and you can actually see where it tells you the obverse detail of the coin, which is that the R wasn't fully struck and it looks more like a K than an R. And so I ended up comparing this to our coin and it actually was that major variety. And so a lot of the varieties are minor varieties. They don't really hold a ton of value. People out there are looking for them, but it's far and few between. But when you're talking about major varieties, you can use the PCGS CoinFAX app as a little bit of a cheat sheet. It's not gonna replace the books, but it is going to be something that will help you guys out in the future. And just being able to spot this, I think, will make us a few hundred dollars more, maybe 500 bucks. And so that's something pretty cool. I think this one has a rarity of three or four, this dye variety. And uh, you never know what you might run into when you're collecting or selling coins. So make sure to double check them and see what you guys got. So speaking of major dye varieties, we just pulled it up on CoinFAX, but we want to talk to you guys a little bit about it. This is a 1955 double die obverse, the king of die varieties. Some people call it air, some people call it a die variety, but if you guys want to learn more about die varieties and how they happen, make sure to click on the link below. Uh, Seth Chandler, one of his employees, talked about it for about seven minutes on how things happen like this, the doubling uh, when coins are struck. A cool coin is this 1955. It's great mid-state 62 brown. Nice chocolatey surfaces, has a few distracting spots on the rim, but overall it's a great offering for someone that wants to have a great 1955 double die. People have been looking for these ever since they were, uh, you know, released from the mint and they sh probably shouldn't have because uh, they become extremely collectible over time and now people are paying a lot, a lot of money for them. And so this is an honor to be able to hold this in our hand and be able to offer it to you guys on AkushaCollectibles.com. So this is a pretty cool deal that we picked up recently. So as you guys saw with the CAC submission, I think it was about a month and a half ago, we ended up submitting, I think, over 120 coins to CAC for a customer. We actually met them outside of the Dayton Coin Show. We sat on the concrete and we exchanged coins and it was kind of an interesting time. Thank you, Roger, for meeting us. 
and we were happy to help him out. And so I think he sent us about 38 coins, something like that. But he sold us some pretty cool buffaloes that we want to uh, just offer to you guys on AcousticCollectibles.com. And so when we were talking about the Dayton show, we ended up leaving the show to help out the customer, talk with him, make sure his coins were safe. And we ended up missing out on a Standing Liberty quarter that was CEC approved. But, you know, when we're wanting to go out and help people, sometimes things get messed up. Sometimes people become impatient and other deals walk out. And that's okay. We ended up helping out Roger and receiving many more coins that we could have ever expected. So very thankful for Roger. We hope you guys check these out. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on the soap boxes, the dye varieties, the buffaloes, what we had to talk about from the heart. Make sure to also subscribe. We got videos coming out every single week. We want you guys to be a part. We'll be at the shirt show this weekend, walking around for an hour or two if you guys want to say hi. And uh, we might be able to take you guys along and, you know, film some content as well. So we'll see you guys in the next video.